Um, I'm gonna let John, uh, John Lee, come up and uh, introduce our main speaker for the evening. He is in uh, a great mogul in uh, real estate, entrepreneur, and a uh, football player. I don't follow, I don't follow uh, football, and I don't follow uh, social media. So I'm gonna have let John introduce our distinguished guest for this evening. In fact, when I was talking, I found out he played for the Cardinals. I said, oh, he, he played with Deardorff and Hart? And John says, no, he's not that old. <laughs> Only a few of us remember that group, I think. Lloyd. Thank you. <laughs> uh, good to have everybody here tonight. Um, I really am excited myself for our speaker tonight. Um, very special guest. If I don't know if you know anything about, about him. He's a... Uh, complete football star as far as I'm concerned. You might want to watch some of the stuff. You can find him on well, all the social medias. He's going to talk more about that. He was here, I believe it was our last live meeting at our old place. He was our last speaker. And uh, before before we, well, before we got shut down and we lost our other place, he's been gracious enough to do two meetings online also for us during the last two years. Um, if you haven't seen those, I do recommend you go back and watch the replays. Uh, Send me, a, uh, send me a request, I'll send you a link, I'll look it up for you. But we are really happy tonight to welcome my friend and one of the best marketers I know, he's gonna, he's gonna enlighten us, Mr. Hakeem Vallis. Thank you so much, John, uh, for having me. Um, wow. I'm, uh, this is my first time doing an in-person speech since post-pandemic, so it's been, uh, I was just telling my buddy Tony on the way over here, I, I did a speech recently for like 300 people, and I like on Zoom when you can see people's reaction and all that type of stuff, but it was, whatever platform they were using, I was staring at myself the entire time, and it was brutal. Um, so with me, and the, the way that I, I speak, so I, I like to call my, my speaking style improv chaos, um, so it's this isn't me taking a script and just blabbering it off to you. This is coming off of just pure experience. And uh, I was just telling uh, my friend earlier, I'm not sure where he went. Anyone has questions while I'm speaking, just raise your hand. Um, I, I, the way I like to talk is I like to set the framework for a very intimate Q&A type of session. And I'm here to just empty my brain out. No essential, you know, whenever the clock ends, it doesn't matter. I think the last time we did our... Uh, our uh, meeting back at the old place, we were outside for like another 45 minutes to an hour, still answering questions because they had, uh, they kicked us out of the building at that time. Um, <clears throat> a little bit about myself. And just as a quick announcement, there's coffee over there, compliments of uh, me and my partner. I have a coffee roasting business called St. Margaret Lane. Uh, this, isn't a, this isn't a coffee talk, just uh, free coffee if anyone wants any. A little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Hakeem Vallis. I'm originally from a small town in New Jersey. Uh, my journey to getting me to the place of where I am today is uh, mainly just comes with, you know, I always tell people if I had a magic pill to give anyone, it would be self-awareness. Uh, and I believe self-awareness is absolutely which is what has gotten me to where I am today. Uh, real estate is actually one of my greatest passions. Uh, for college, I went to a small school called Monmouth University, and they're one of the, the few schools uh, that offer a degree in business with a concentration in real estate. Uh, so I got to get a, a very uh, strong education in underwriting deals, walking large properties, and, and things of that nature. And at the time when I was in college, the girl I was dating, her dad had just launched a house flipping company, and he took me under his wing, and we flipped about 10 houses together. Uh, up in uh, North Jersey, you know, from about 2011 to 2013. Uh, but unfortunately, when me and his daughter broke up, uh, that professional relationship <laughs> also ended. And uh, that's when I stopped flipping houses. Uh, while I was in college, uh, just to kind of give you the journey, I was a college football player and I was a bench player. I rode the bench. I did not touch the football field until my senior year. Uh, senior year is uh, when I got my first catch, my first touchdown. And personally, where everything changed for me mentally and where I kind of flipped my perspective is I had a, a very traumatic experience uh, happen to me and it's, we don't have to go deep, deep into it, but I was on a missionary trip down in Haiti and our compound was ambushed uh, by eight guys with guns 
I was shot at point blank range, hog tied, blindfolded and robbed of all of our possessions, you know, urinated myself, didn't even realize it. And after about 45 minutes of hell, uh, was allowed to go free and uh, made it back home. I personally credit just like a lot of my success to that bittersweet experience. I always try and tell people is, you know, we all have these different inflection points in our lives that, you know, we tend to either just swallow, you know, compartmentalize and things like that versus framing it against your everyday struggles. You know, for me personally, you know, being a, a new father, you know, three years old, still feels like it's new. Uh, just framing your everyday struggles against the fact that I'm not dead is honestly puts me in a, a, a place of just pure gratitude. And like just being here tonight, I'm eternally grateful just to be here and very thankful for John for uh, for having me. I'm, and I'm the worst with communication, <laughs> but I literally booked my flight this morning to get here at 2 p.m. to speak tonight. I, I, right now, I currently live in uh, Miami. Uh, a little bit about from an investing standpoint, how I got into the professional investing world is uh, in 2016, I uh, made it to the NFL. I uh, played my rookie year in Arizona with the Cardinals. Um, was still trying to figure out what's going to be my in in the real estate game. And when my rookie year ended, um, I used a platform called Bigger Pockets. I'm not sure how popular it is uh, nowadays, but I used that to just network my face off. Like January like 3rd, as soon as we didn't make the playoffs, I put out a post just pretty much open arms of like, I want to meet any and everyone that's in the real estate game in Arizona. And I did that. And about three months later, I bought a fourplex. I house hacked it using uh, my FHA loan. And that's just a pure credit personally, just to just networking and uh, bought that fourplex, lived in one unit, rented out the other three, lived for free. Uh, obviously with a FHA loan, you technically have to live in a unit for up to a year. Uh, but I got cut about six to seven months after purchasing that property. So I Airbnb the unit that I was living in and got signed by the Detroit Lions. Uh, repeated, rinse and repeated, did the same thing in Detroit and house hacked a duplex, lived in one side, Airbnb the other side, was able to live for free uh, while playing for the Lions. And that was when I uh, had my daughter uh, just, telling, uh, just telling somebody, had her the morning of a game, which was pure insanity. And, uh, while I was in Detroit, along with just networking, I knew I wanted to also get into the real estate side of the cannabis industry and met the right people, met the right partners. And we bought a 40 acre cannabis farm uh, to essentially partner with experienced operators in the industry by essentially giving them our land and taking an equity percentage and also, you know, essentially doing a triple net lease uh, with those operators on the back end. After leaving the Detroit Lions, I uh, went from Detroit to the New York Giants, was there for only about five to six weeks. And at that point, mentally, I was done with football. I wanted to go full time and just be an entrepreneur, being a real estate investor and being a dad because uh, I had her August of that year and retired by the end of that year. Um, and at that point, it was like, OK, cool. Now, how do I figure out what I actually want to do in the real estate space? How do I use these resources that I've now obtained, you know, from playing professional football uh, for three years? And how do I utilize my network and just expand and, and really just keep going? Um, I bought a smaller seven unit. I wanted to, like, you know, tap into the raising capital game, but not into like a, you know, full scale syndication because personally, I didn't think I was ready to do that yet. Uh, so brought along about three to four partners, and we bought a small seven-unit property out in Des Moines, Ohio, uh, Ida, Des Moines, Iowa, not Idaho or Ohio, <laughs> Des Moines, Iowa. Um, bought it, held it for about two years, and we sold it right before the pandemic started, uh, thank God. And then, uh, well, not thank God, because let me actually tell you another story about that fourplex uh, that I bought in Arizona and where and how I'm where I'm at today. That fourplex I bought, kind of give you some just raw numbers. I bought it for about 268 with an FHA loan, put down around 13 on it in 2017. Come 2020, uh, about February of 2020, I reached out to my broker and was like, hey man, I'm thinking about selling it. Let's start getting the docs together and all that type of stuff. In March, we all know the NBA shut down. And I was just like, all right, let's let's just chill out. You know, maybe it's not time to, to sell it yet. We just have to like ride this wave of whatever this, this COVID thing is. 
And uh, come July of that year, uh, he had someone who had a 1031 exchange. He's like, hey, man, if you want to sell your property, this guy is desperate. He's got like 18 days to go before he's going to you know, get taxed on all this money. So he might be able to negotiate. It's like, cool, let's, let's go to the negotiate table and made a nice penny on it. Made, probably made profit about 90000 on it. But then six months later, that same guy took that property, did nothing to it and sold it for $200,000 more. And I was just like, at that point, I was just like, I have absolutely no idea what is happening in this real estate market right now. So personally, I took the sidelines uh, from an investing standpoint. I haven't deployed any capital since my seven unit that we purchased. And I've been just essentially trying to figure out my best ways on how I can bring value to the real estate industry. And that's when I launched my media agency called Perspective Global Media. I think in a 2022 world, attention is everything, but attention also can be a drug and attention can also be devastating for a lot of different people, depending on what they're ultimately doing. I was uh, having a conversation with uh, this gentleman and this gentleman earlier of when you think of media and brand and attention, Back in the old days, we called it something else, which was simply reputation. Who are you? What do you do? And what are you all about? And if I ask these three people about you, what, are, what am I going to find out about that? When you think of social media, when you think of LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all these different platforms, I try and tell people to just reframe it in your head as reputation. It doesn't have to be, you know, we put these platforms on this massive pedestal. We put social media on this massive pedestal. But when you just think about it from a standpoint of reputation, it will shift your perspective. What really changed everything for me, and when, when I started putting out content at scale, was when I had that little girl over there. One thing we fail to realize is that if all of our great, great, great grandparents would look at us today and would solve the, the different tools that we have on these cell phones, they'd all smack us in our face because they'd realize, why aren't you guys taking advantage of this stuff? Because, you know, years ago, in order to do what we can do from our cell phone, you would literally have to launch a satellite up into space and be the Fox News, the CNN, the ABC, the MSNBC of the day to broadcast your propaganda out to the world. Now we have an opportunity that the world has never seen to essentially do it from our phone. And one thing that most of us are not thinking about when we think of content, most of us are just thinking about us, you know, myself, 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 what are the, my 10 closest friends from high school thinking about me when I put this post out versus what I like to reframe it as is legacy. If each and every one of you guys could watch TikToks, Instagrams, Facebooks, LinkedIn posts of your great, 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 great grandparents, I can promise you that you all would watch them, rewatch them, rewatch them again. You'd cry, you'd laugh, you'd share it with your friends, you'd share it with your family, you'd rewatch them again, you'd learn something about yourself. But none of us are doing that. And like we have to realize that we are all the digital matriarchs and patriarchs of our forever distant bloodline. But most of us, what we're putting out on social is the fake version of ourselves. Our great, 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 great grandkids are going to have no idea whom you actually are. But the opportunity we have with these devices in our pockets, we've never seen it. There's only a small percentage that are actually taken advantage of putting out the real version of ourselves. And I think the, the biggest issue that we're all running into is most of us are, I mean, I'm, I'm the biggest, uh, you know, corporate of it is we're all insecure. We're severely insecure. We're, we're, we're scared about what this person is going to think about us, what this person is going to say about us, what people in my industry are going to say about us, what that person from work is going to say about us, what my kids are going to say about us, what that person is going to say about us. And what we don't realize is that everybody has their own crap already that they're dealing with. And like if we would just post in perpetuity what we're ultimately trying to get across. And when I think about posting, I always think about value. And value can come in so many different ways, education, information, and entertainment. And the simplest way, in my opinion, to create content is a mantra that I love, which is document, don't create. Document, don't create. We put creating content 
on a pedestal and it causes this massive anxiety internally of, oh, I've got to create a Facebook post today. I've got to create a LinkedIn post today because it's going to help my business. I've got to create a TikTok post because Hakeem said I need to create a TikTok post. And we're, now we're all stressed out. Four hours have gone by and now it's time for pet. And we're like, all right, maybe tomorrow I'll worry about creating content. But if we simply document it, not in we have to create this super fancy, you know, Steven Spielberg documentary in that sense, but documenting our simple day-to-day -day of our daily life, it will bring value to that next person. We human beings, all of us in here, we're inherently special. Like the odds of any of us being in this room right now is one, and I believe 370 trillion. The odds that mom and dad, mom or dad saw that twinkle in mom's eye, like mom could have went and got another glass of wine and you're not here today in that sense. But where I'm going with that, Beating the odds of one in 370 trillion is like winning the lottery a couple hundred times, is like getting struck by lightning a couple thousand times, solely off of those odds. This isn't like a big rah-rah motivational talk, but I'm trying to be real with you, solely off of beating those odds, we're all inherently special. Meaning our day-to-day -day of documenting our process and our natural way we go about things, how do I buy a property? How do I go about going to the title office? How do I go about just talking to a couple of tenants? How do I go about when I'm analyzing and underwriting a deal? How do I go when I'm cold calling? What do I do when I'm talking to my VAs? What do I do when I'm bringing my entire team together if I have an entire team and we're talking about X, Y, and Z? That is going to bring value to the next person. And I promise you that people are watching and trying to learn from you. Everyone in this room, we're, we're, there are doing different things. You could have three single family houses to having a portfolio of thousands of houses. You're in the game. Most people are trying to get in the game and be in a place of where you guys are today. And when you think about content and when you think about brand from a, you know, from a, a, a higher level in that sense, we all think about it of how is this instantly going to put money in my pocket right now? And I always tell people it's not the right way to think about it. Brand is not transactional. Brand is now, you know, we think about how do I retarget people and get people to come to this page to then buy X, Y, and Z, buy this course, buy this, buy that. Brand isn't transactional. Brand is off of a reason why something made you feel a particular way. Brand is the reason why everyone is wearing what they're wearing on their, on their clothes right now. Why are you wearing these shoes, I didn't get retargeted is the reason why I bought these shoes. These are just some of my favorite shoes because Vans has a pretty cool brand, just personally. But brand in our industry, when it comes to real estate, it makes your life a whole lot easier when you have people coming to you versus all day having to go and reach out to people when you need help with this and that and this and that and this and that and this and that, where you need money for this next project, where you need this, per you want to partner up with this person to get yourself to this next level in, in whatever industry you're ultimately in. Brand is what makes all of us compelling individuals, which makes people, ultimately attracts people to come into our own ecosphere, into our own essentially world in that sense. But all of us are missing the point because brand, how I like to think of it is, it's literally everything. Like if you are transparent, if none of you guys have a meth lab in your basement, you have nothing to worry about. Like everyone is scared of, oh, I can't post tomorrow because this might happen or this person might find me or, or that might happen. Like, unless you are doing some real criminal stuff, you have nothing to worry about. Just put your content and your truths out into the world and positive things will come back to you. And I think most of us, you know, when you think about putting out your truths, you know, most of us may have had bad things happen in the past. You may have screwed up a deal. You may have burned a partner. You may have put together this massive deal and this person was going to get this referral. This person was going to make this much equity on it. This person was going to make this much on that deal. But when that deal fell apart, you went into the dark and no one's heard from you since. And when it comes to content, content just... No, because if I post something, all these people are going to find out about that time, you know, 17 years ago when this deal fell apart and blah, 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 blah. I always tell people, just come out in front of it. Like, if 
what you are ultimately worried about. If I'm speaking to one person in this room because you're feeling this, tomorrow, get on front of your phone, get on your camera and jump out and talk about it. Hey guys, I don't know if you guys know this, back in 2003, I screwed up, lost this deal. You know, I actually came out on top like 2,500, didn't actually tell anybody about that. This happened, that happened, this happened, that happened, this happened. Because when you own your truths, no one can call you out for that in that sense. And when you get to a place of honestly just living your life in an authentic and genuine way, content becomes easy. And it ultimately helps you in every phase of your life. And like, I came to talk today to you guys about TikTok. One, raise your hand if any of you guys have a TikTok. One, two, three people. Attention is everything. Last time when I was having this conversation in 2019, I was screaming at everyone in the room about LinkedIn. The opportunity is still there on LinkedIn. LinkedIn and TikTok, there is a massive, we are all business people in here. There's a massive supply and demand gap. There is a ridiculous amount of people, eyes, watching TikToks all day. Right now, that they haven't released uh, this past year's data on it, but it's very parallel to LinkedIn. LinkedIn's data right now, there's 750 million daily active users on LinkedIn. Very close to that. On, it's over a billion on TikTok, but... Stay with me here for a second. Of the 750 million active users on that platform, only 4 million post on a weekly basis. So you have 4 million people. Hi, princess. You've got 4 million people posting content for 750 million people. But those 750 people, they're a million people, they're coming back every single week for more and more and more and more and more content which means those 4 million people where the platform's only goal is to keep you on the platform, they're putting that content in front of all 750 million of those people. Same exact thing has happened on TikTok. The issue with TikTok and everyone in this room and why you guys have written off TikTok because you see your nieces, your nephews, your kids, your grandkids, everyone that are posting dances and doing all that crazy type of stuff that I'm sure you guys all see. And you're like, oh, I'm not getting on that TikTok platform. Blah, 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 blah. As someone who has conversations with the C-suite level execs at TikTok, I can promise you TikTok does not want to be generalized as a dancing platform. TikTok's ultimate goal is to be viewed the way YouTube was viewed 10 years ago. The most informative and educational platform. We say, I'm going to YouTube University to learn how to fix my car, do this, do that. When I was in college, I had an iPhone repair business and I used to fix iPhones all day. I learned it all from YouTube. Where I'm going with that is TikTok wants to be exactly that. Meaning what you do in real estate, what you do in foreclosures, what you do in short sales, if you're a broker, if you're an attorney, if you're anything, there is an angle for you to create content on that platform. And like, it's hard. Anything that's worth doing or is meaningful is going to be hard. I think we all simply think we're just going to snap our fingers and you get the magic key and code to TikTok and all of a sudden, like, you're crushing it. It's not going to be that easy. But when you think about content and if real estate is for me, like real estate's a forever game for me. Like I want to be investing in real estate when I'm 70, when I'm 80, when I'm 90. I want to still be, I want to be at least at the table. I might not be contributing much, but I want to be at the table. Brand is what can put you at those tables. Yes, you know, people like to write me off and say like, oh, because for example, on, on TikTok right now, I have over 280,000 followers on the platform. But people write it off and say, oh, you're an NFL ex-professional athlete. I can promise you that's not the reason. None of you guys ever heard of me before I came and spoke at the last real estate meetup. And when I retired from the NFL, I had about four to 5,000 followers across all social media platforms. But by practically putting in the work, because on a lot of other platforms, it takes a long shot. And it takes a miracle to happen to ultimately have your breakthrough to now be known about all these different things. TikTok and LinkedIn, it is severely practical, meaning post three times a day, post four times a day, and actually see 
what happens? And I see, I see her shaking her head saying, wow, that's a, that's a lot. We underestimate how much time we also waste on a daily and a weekly type of basis. You know, I was doing the math when I was actually on the airplane today because the Wi-Fi cut out. And I saw this stat, it's, there's 168 hours in a week. Let's say we have a full-time job or let's say we're working 40 hours a week. So we got 40 hours taken off. Let's say we want to spend another, let's say we spend 20 hours a week just eating. Let's say we spend another 20 hours a week spending time with family and friends. Let's say we sleep for eight hours a night. So whatever, eight times seven, another 56 hours just sleeping. So we got 56 plus 20, which is 76, plus another 20, which is 96, plus let's just throw in another 30 hours of just Netflix time. And that's 126 hours of 168 hours. It's another 40 hours a week that we are missing out on. I, was, I tell everyone, just audit your week. We don't do that. We tend to, you know, we, we get stuck up in the daily minutia of our day-to-day -day processes and we don't realize that we're actually spinning in circles and that if you actually were practical about your weekly and your daily processes that you got a lot of time to actually do some of this stuff. And if you actually focus on it, it's gonna take all of your ventures that you're working on right now, I promise you, to the next level. And it's, how do I, how do I break this down to an even more uh, you know, practical sense to, to break it down into pillars? Because you, I'm sure you guys are all here and be like, yeah, I should post on TikTok. Yeah, I should post on TikTok. But like, what the hell should I actually post on TikTok? And I always like to break it down into pillars. And by the way, if anyone has questions while I'm talking, just raise your hand and I will answer it. And like I said, this is meant to be super intimate because this isn't a, a memorized talk and you're not going to throw me off. Pillars, meaning how do I make it easier for me to create content versus that awkward, anxious moment of, okay, I need to create content today. What am I supposed to do? Okay, I need to, when you think of your content as a whole in pillars, it will, it, it simplifies it uh, to, a, to a massive extent. When I think of real estate, one of the best and easiest things, like I said before, is document, don't create. Record your day-to-day -day processes. TikTok has a very simple, very, 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 very simple guided created, uh, guided creative, like in terms of their creator tools, to actually record your day. And I'll Anybody come up to me afterwards and I'll show you an example of this. Recording your day in three second increments and going back and then doing a simple voiceover of what you actually did. Meaning you just woke up, you don't have to you know, do the whole, there's, there's a lot of weird influencers who wake up, oh, let me set my phone up real quick, go back to sleep and fake like I'm just waking up. Like, don't do that, it's weird. That's not, that's not documenting, that's creating in a sense. Document your day in the sense of, okay, I'll, I'll give it today. If I was recording my actual day-to-day, -day, I really didn't do much, but I still did a lot. Meaning, I woke up around 5.30 and I had to poop. And then I realized, oh, snap, I got to book my flight. And I booked my flight. Boom. Went back to sleep. My flight left around noonish. So you got three seconds of me in the Uber. You got three seconds of me in the airport. You got three seconds of me walking on the plane. We got three seconds of me sitting on the plane. We got three seconds of me getting off the plane. We got three seconds of me of my daughter's grandma picking me up from the airport. We got three seconds of us just talking and chatting in the car. We got three seconds of me picking her up from her mother's house. We got another three seconds of us two biking together going over to the park. You got another three seconds of us playing at the park. You got three seconds of us rushing over to Walmart to get her some apple juice and some snacks for the speech tonight. You got another three seconds of me getting in a quick shower while my coffee partner, Tony, is waiting in the driveway outside. You got three seconds of us driving over here. You got three seconds of me speaking to a room of people. You got three seconds of me probably chatting with people afterwards. Then you got three seconds of us, you know, reading a bedtime story and going to bed. That's probably around 60 seconds. Seems like a lot, but that's real. I didn't do anything different than what I was already doing. TikTok will then allow you to essentially, so I record three seconds, save, put it back in my pocket. Keep living my life, doing something else, quick record three seconds. Maybe I don't want to see people see me yet. I'm still a little bit shy. Save, put it back in my pocket. Another three seconds, boom. Now I go back at the end of the day. I can literally watch that entire day and I can talk over it. 
saying, okay, hey guys, so today I woke up this morning and took a poop and realized that I had to do a speech today. Then I went to bed for a little bit and went to the airport, did this, everything I just said, but in an actual flowing manner. That's content. It seems probably like super stupid, doesn't seem that cool. I promise you it is content. And it's something that you, everyone can leave here and do that every single day for the rest of their life. Forget about, forget about brand for a second. Forget about this helping your business. Forget about all of that. Think about what I said before when it comes to legacy. Imagine if you could watch your day-to-day -day of your great, 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 great grandpa. Like I'm getting the chills and goosebumps even thinking about it. Most speeches, it's so cool that she's here right now. Hey, Lucy. If a speech is recorded for the most part, I'll literally wave in cam like I'll wave in a camera and say, hi, Lucy, because I know 30 years from now, she's going to rewatch this talk someday. But we don't think about content like that. And when you think about it like that, it allows you to be 10 times more genuine on film, which will literally, from a 10x standpoint, help you when it comes to actually building your brand because we're humans at the end of the day. You can watch a video for four seconds and go, yeah, that person's full of crap. I don't even know what the hell he's talking about right now. Or you can watch a video and be like, that seems, it's the same feeling you get when you're talking to someone and you're like, this guy's probably a little bit full of crap. Or you talk to someone, you're like, man, I want to actually learn a little bit more about this person and go into an even deeper dive. But it's back to the point of what I said before as well. Brand, the ROI of a building a brand is infinite. It's not an instant transactional thing. It's like asking, asking me, what's the ROI of my mom? Like my mom did everything for me. Like, I don't even want to choke up when I'm saying that, but like it's infinite in that standpoint of putting your truths, what you know, the value that you have, all of that into the ecosphere. It will come back tenfold because most of us, I'm telling you, 99.9% .9 of us are putting the fake version of ourselves out there. So document, that's probably the simplest pillar out there. The second pillar that I love, but it takes a little bit more uh, work to do, is doing some type of interview style show. It doesn't have to be a show show where I got the bells and whistles, the fancy backdrop, this, and that, and all that, all that type of stuff. But I always tell people, if you don't have anything to say right now, you know a lot of people, I can point out 10 people in this room that if I interviewed them for 12 minutes, I probably have about six to seven to eight to nine to 10 pieces of content that I could now put out because I know it's going to bring value to someone. If I ask, you know, John in here about, hey, what's going on in the Branson area? And he just talks for three minutes. That's a piece of content. That can be a TikTok video. That can be you listening to it and then you adding your two cents on why you think that's actually very important. That's you taking that three minute answer and maybe typing four sentences on LinkedIn saying, hey guys, did you hear about what the hell's going on in Branson? This, that, 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 and that. Shout out to my guy, John Lee. And check out his meetings and all that type of stuff too. You can do that in perpetuity. And when you think about interviewing people, this is just like a side note, like forget TikTok for a second. The biggest hack in networking is starting a show. The biggest hack in networking is starting some type of interview-based show. Most people think I'm starting a podcast, I'm starting a show, that means I have to sit on my pedestal and project all my BS to you, which a lot of people do on podcasts. The best podcast is when I'm sitting down with people with experience who've actually done what I ultimately wanna do and I know it's gonna bring value to tenfolds of people and getting those answers and extracting those answers out of them. But the beauty of it, from a networking standpoint, anyone that you want to reach, that you want to meet, that seems like, oh, that's pretty hard to even, I don't know how the hell I'm going to get in front of the guy who owns this, or the lady who runs this, or the person who owns this property. I promise you, if I reach out to that investor and say, hey, can I just sit down and pick your brain on how you bought this property? I'm like, eh, I don't have time for that right now. Reach out to that same person and say, hey, I have this show called the St. Louis Real Estate Network and would love to interview you and actually hear your story. That same person is going to be like, oh, hell yeah. I've never been on a podcast before. I'd, I'd love to do something like that because I'm sure if, 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 if any of you guys have read the book, raise your hand if you've read the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's a great book. It, we recommend it to all real estate investors. The thesis of that book is let people talk about themselves. 
the 2022 version of that book is start a podcast because you can do it much faster. It doesn't have to be in person. It can be over Zoom and that person will still feel the same way about you because it's like, I don't know why I like that Hakeem guy, but maybe because I just blabber for an hour talking about myself for an hour because humans inherently, that's all we want to do at the end of the day. We just want to feel heard and we want to be known. Doing that is a hack to one networking yourself. You want to invest in apartment buildings? Interview 30 people who own apartment buildings. You want to invest in notes? Interview 30 people to do that. You want to be, like I, I'm telling you, it is the, when I launched my media agency, I wanted, I, I just moved to St. Louis, didn't know anyone here in St. Louis. I started a show called the St. Louis Small Business Podcast because I wanted to work with small business owners and do their digital marketing. My first three guests on the St. Louis Small Business Podcast were my first three clients for my media agency because I didn't reach out to them saying, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Business Owner, can I do your content for you? Can I do your TikTok? Like, no, because no one wants to hear that. But hey, Mrs. Business Owner, I love your restaurant. I come here all the time. Would love to interview and hear more about your story. We talk. Now we're friends. Now, a week later, and I make a little deck saying, hey, you should probably try and do this, that, this, that, this, that. It's going to help because I've done it with this, that, and that. Sure, let's meet again for lunch and we'll talk about it. Boom, client closed. I'm telling you, it works. But the beauty of it is when it comes to content, you can use all of your interviews as content. It doesn't have to be the long 40-minute interview of you guys sitting down and talking about BS for the first 15 minutes anyway. But when you ask specifically that apartment investor, hey, Mrs. Investor, tell me how you raised $3.3 million when you bought that development bill the other day. Oh, so first, I don't know if you know, there's something called self-directed IRAs. And I've got a lot of friends who are doctors and dentists, and they put their money in IRAs, and I taught them how to self-direct it, and I use them to passively invest into my syndication, and blah, 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 blah. That's a piece of content. But when you're doing that, and I like to batch everything in my life, so if I'm interviewing on Saturdays, I'll knock out five interviews in a row, which will give me content for the next two to three weeks. Just try it out. Google is your mother. Like, use Google like no other. Everyone, you know, the, the easiest part is actually just Googling and how do I start a podcast? Enter. Look up Anchor. Anchor is a free platform where essentially owned by Spotify, puts your podcast on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, all that stuff. But if you use video as well, you now have that video to essentially turn and post-produce into meaningful value-add content to ultimately your community. Real estate is a community game. When I first started this, I'm the, the biggest ego in here. I promise you. And I want to do everything myself. Oh, yeah, I can take out an apartment building on myself. I can do this all by myself. I can do that all by myself. Sure. Real estate is a community game. Start diving deeper into your community. You want to start. I don't want to give away tricks to, for, to give you competition, John, but you want to start a real estate meetup group? Start interviewing investors. Every 10 meetups, every 10, every 10 episodes, meet those, inv invest back into your brand, rent out the private dining room of some restaurant, have those 10 investors all in one place and let them bring value to each other. But by you being the force that brought everybody in that room, that value will ultimately come back to you. But if you're doing that, once a month, you're doing 10 investors and you're having a dinner. And then at the end of the year, you've interviewed 120 people. That's a conference. That's a group that looks like this, it's, but it's practical when you think about it like that. Some people just put out a Facebook post saying, hey, guys, going to meet at this place and just pray that people will show up. Practically, if you do it that way, you've now got friends that will actually show up. But now you're investing and doing business with people who like trust and respect you because the relationship started when you brought them value by bringing them on, on your show. When in reality, they brought you value because they're ultimately boosting your brand because you interviewed them. That's another pillar of content. Another pillar of content that I like to do is just highlight people. You know, one of your friends in this group just closed on a property. Hey, let's talk for five minutes. I want to hear more about that property you just closed on. And I want to maybe create a piece of content to show the rest of the world on how other people can do the same exact thing in the most practical manner. I have a client right now who he has a... a, a a software tech company that helps investors on helps principals onboard their passive investors and kind of have like a uh, what's the word like a almost like a database of uh, 
a two-way database of seeing all my projects, getting your K-1s, getting all of your stuff essentially all through that. But for his TikTok, he just highlights the deals that his clients who use his tech have done. So he's just showing, hey, I got this client in this part of North Carolina just closed on this self-storage facility. This is how they did it. This is how they raised the capital. The capital stack looked like this. This is where they are now. And while he's talking, there's pictures and videos of all the stuff going on that, that they did on that project. He's bringing value to the end consumer. And you don't know who that end consumer ultimately is. TikTok, we think that's just a platform where the, the age is just a bunch of 16 year olds and all that type of stuff. It's not true. When I first made the pivot of my media company into the, the TikTok world, I was like, I only, only give advice that I actually take myself. I started interviewing people and did a little interview series called Don't Sleep on TikTok. One of the first people I interviewed was a guy who was a financial advisor, a financial advisor who has these most toughest guidelines when it comes to content because they've got to deal with FINRA, they've got to deal with the SEC, they've got to get every piece of content they put out approved. This guy, in 2021, his business went from $5 million in revenue to $30 million in revenue, solely off of TikTok. On, I think his average client that he was getting for his practice was between the ages of 33 and 37. On TikTok, I can promise you if someone with as boring of content that financial advisors put out can have that type of success on TikTok, it will help whatever you're ultimately trying to accomplish when it comes to your real estate business. And like, just don't overcomplicate it. You know, like any and everything can be a piece of content. This water bottle can be a piece of content. I could talk about how much I like water or talk about how my girlfriend hurt her knee and I made like a salt water thing by slitting a hole in it and spraying it like on her. Just any and everything can be content. We just, you have to reframe and rethink about the way the rest of the world may view content and take away your preconceived thoughts and honestly let go of the insecurities that we're all holding on to. Like the best piece of advice I tell people, I always tell younger people this because they actually go and do it, is go to the mall, go to you know the Galleria, go to Mid Rivers, go anywhere that there's a lot of people, go by the fountain, something of that sort, and just lay on your back for 60 seconds on the floor, stare at the ceiling. Only rules are you can't tell people like, oh, this is a social experiment, like don't freak out or anything like that. Literally just silence, eyes open, staring at the ceiling. For 60 seconds, people are gonna look at you like, oh my gosh, that person's crazy. People are gonna take pictures of you. People are like, maybe go and get security on you, something of that sort. 60 seconds, you're gonna get up and you're gonna go about your day and go and shop. But what you're gonna realize is you're not dead. No one hurt you. The end of the world is not happening, anything of that sort. But for those 60 seconds, those chemicals that your body is feeling, even the chemicals that you guys are feeling right now, thinking about doing that, are the same exact chemicals we feel and the reasons why we don't put out content on social media. Because we are petrified of what anyone else thinks about us. But try that. And it will, you'll realize, oh, I'm not dead. I can actually do this content thing. That's hands down one of my best pieces of advice is to get out of your own bubble and just reframe the fact that we're all just getting started. You know, like real estate, for me, like I said, it's a forever game. With today's modern technology, we're all going to live to we're 100 in this room. Like I'm 29 years old. I'm 11 years past 18. So I'm 11 years as an adult. And I think that I am, I am literally in first grade of adulthood. And like, think about it that way. When I'm 50, we're halfway there. Half, like the second, like I am in the second quarter right now. And I don't even want, I don't want to like, no one likes to be like, blowouts are fun, but no one wants to be blowing out a team super early because like, you're kind of vulnerable at that standpoint for a comeback. But think about life that way, just in the sense that <laughs> it's a forever game. It's a day to day to day to day grind. But when it comes to content, I want people to ultimately, I, I want to leave a legacy. I want people to know who I am, know that I'm a person who comes with kindness, 
and empathy and ultimately just wants to shift a few people's perspective because I think if, if I can accomplish that, then like my, my job here uh, is ultimately done. But like I said at the beginning of this, I don't want to just stand on my soap opera and just you know speak and yell at you guys uh, for this entire time. I really would love to open this up for some Q&A if anyone has some, some questions. Yes, sir. Um, I said, document, don't create, podcasting, uh, or just, inter just don't, don't even think about pod interview 100 people and never air the interview. Just take the interviews, post-produce them for your social platforms. So document, don't create, interview style content, highlighting other people. And then I say that for the fourth thing is highlighting the things that you've actually done yourself. So if you have, if you fix and flip the property X amount of years ago, you can make 30 pieces of content on the, like, you can make a one minute video on how you found the property. You can make another minute video on how you finance the property. You can make another minute video of everything that went wrong in that process. You can make another minute video of the actual numbers. You know, we bought it for this, we negotiated, we did that, we put this type of financing on it, we closed it, we flipped it, we sold it, we burned it, we did whatever we did. We refied, we cashed out, we 1031'd it and did. We've all done stuff in this room. So you have ammo. It's just, can you reframe it and actually create it, turn it into content? But can you actually bring value to the next person? I, I tell everyone, give all your craziest secrets in real estate away because it'll come back tenfold for you. The world is absolutely abundant. And we are, we think of the world and like the world that we're definitely in right now is like, we're living in a world of finite of everything, but like it's abundant. And when it comes to entrepreneurship and when it comes to real estate, especially like the biggest networking game out there, it's abundant. Like, give it all away for free. Every trick, everything. Yes, ma'am. No, well, you, you're just, it's transparent up front. Like, hey, Heather, like, do you do real estate yourself? I'm sure, uh, uh, what's like your, your niche that you focus on? Uh, what's your niche that you focus on in real estate? Okay, so Verbos. Hey, other. Um, I'm getting into the property management game or I'm in the real estate world and I've got this podcast called XYZ or I'm just interviewing a whole bunch of people and trying to create some content out of it. I'd love to sit down with you and learn more about how you started your business. Would you be down for that? Uh, yeah, no, unless you're talking about like, LeBron James or somebody like of, of that type of stature, like, no. And I think how I always frame it when I'm interviewing anyone, because like interviews can be very, 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 very genuine. You can get deep. Like some people forget that they're even being recorded. And I always tell them at the beginning of the interview, anything that you say in this, like can be erased. Like we're not live. That's where live is kind of more of a trickier type of thing because things might come out or whatever might happen in that sense. But if you're completely transparent and open and say like, hey, we just finished that interview. I know you mentioned something about that. Do you want me to even include that on the back end? I go, oh, no, if you could take that out, please. That's how you got to frame it. But I have personally, you know, I've interviewed well over 100 people and have never had that type of issue. Like you'll get more of an issue of people when you don't put their content out there. Because let's say you have a backlog of X amount of interviews. I, I've gotten that. I wouldn't say more than because I've never gotten someone saying, hey, like, you shouldn't have put that out there, blah, 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 blah. It's like, when you agreed, you, you agreed to come on the show. But if you want to take that extra step of quick press release, just sign this, not going to hurt you. You can probably find a template contract right online. Yes, ma'am. Talk about some of the services your business offers. Yes, ma'am. So we do... Uh, a variety of different things. Like one is just like some people we work with, like that guy I was telling you about who has that software company. We work hand in hand with his actual marketing team. So we consult on them. We teach them the ins and outs of like the, the boxes that they should be sticking to with the content that they're trying to put out. And then our team actually post produces their content, but their marketing team actually captures the content because they're in Chicago. So they're capturing all the content of that guy because he's got the, the resources to have a team around him. But then they send all that raw footage for us and we post produce it. So we kind of have different packages of, okay, we will 
edit, let's say the, the, the most blanket packages we have is 15 TikTok videos, which is essentially posting every other day for 30 days straight. We do that for $500. For 30 TikTok videos for posting every day for a month straight, we do that for a thousand, just simple 500, 1,000. And then everything else we essentially do on a, uh, what do you call it? We, we'd send out proposals. So hearing everything that you ultimately want to get done, and then in 24 hours, getting back to you essentially on what and how we can help you uh, on the back end. Yes, ma'am. Um, the first one is, is it good to link like different channels, like to link your Instagram or your Facebook with TikTok and like post the TikTok stuff on like a Facebook business page or fan page or even your personal page? Yes, um, but there's layers to that answer. I think you should always take your TikToks. I take, I mean, some of my best LinkedIn videos are TikToks, but understand like take 10 minutes tonight and Google the aspect, aspect ratios that are best for each platform. I don't know if you know what an aspect ratio is, meaning like landscape versus portrait, like nine by 16 yeah. versus TikToks are all in nine by 16 or 16 by nine mode in that sense it's not smart or wise to take that video that's already in that vertical mode and then just post it to your LinkedIn because LinkedIn doesn't do well with nine by 16 because it show, it looks weird in your feed. So you take that same video and there's an app called InShot, I-N-S-H-O-T. Um, everything I believe is free on it. You could take that nine by 16 video and turn it into a one-to-one -one video, which is LinkedIn videos over index on LinkedIn when they're in one-to-one -one aspect ratio. So you can take the nine by 16 video and put a black square behind it. So the video is technically in one-to-one -one mode, but you've got your nine by 16 in the middle. So I think it's great to do that because it's taking a piece of content, like from one podcast episode, you can and should be able to get almost 50 pieces of content out of it. Meaning the micro content of the answers that you got answered, so in video form, whether it's on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, whether it's a quote when, you know, that person said at the end of their interview, hey, man, my best piece of advice for real estate is the fortune is in the follow up, meaning we are presented millions of opportunities, but most people don't follow up. You taking that quote and let's say it's me and it's a picture of me and it says the fortune is in the follow up, like a simple, that's, that's a piece of content. And you can do that 20 times with every episode that you've ever done. That picture with the quote and your three sentence caption, which all can be done like very fast. Once like, there's gonna be a week of like, oh, this is terrible, this is hard. And that's usually when most people quit. But after that, like I do my content, most of my content gets done when I'm pooping. <laughs> because as real as it sounds, but it's just like boom, 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 done. Now I'm back to the action of my day-to-day, -day, uh, just my day-to-day my, my -day process in that sense. Does that answer your question though? That does. I had a second question, yes, which is a little specific, but I'm hoping it can be like brought down. No, spe hello? Spe specific questions are always great because it's going to bring value to someone else in the room. Um, so my husband is, needs to completely overhaul the brand for an existing um, construction company that, that deals with... Um, like uh, siding, windows, fencing, decking, that sort of stuff, because even, I, I hate to say it, but the web page is even horrific. So um, what, what, like, how would someone do that? Like, it's an existing company, the commercial exists, the commercial side is okay, but if he's training at residential customers and like really build the brand from the ground up, even though it's not a new company, how would someone, what would be the best ways to do that, including just like first steps? Um, that's a great question. Um, you're saying the commercial side's good. You guys are working on the residential side. It's just, it's hard because you have con construction. It's a more of a gritty type of crowd who are, especially on the residential side. Does he own the company? He runs the company? He, um, he's going to be, he's sort of a partner now. He's going to own it in about three years. It's okay, been cool. around for like three to five years. Okay, cool. Brand and content internally as a company has to ultimately become religion just like once that is the i wouldn't say the thesis but like the 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 backbone of the company it'll help in the sense of like how i would do it let's say it's my company and tomorrow i needed to start putting out a whole bunch of content for you know xyz company 
a couple of different things. One, I would do like, here's back to pillars. I always like to talk about pillars. I always like to like, the world is abundant. Give value always. Meaning everything that you guys do as a company, how do I show my community how to do all of that for free? Does that make sense? It's like, how do I,
perfect example for this room because it's real estate. When I also launched my media company, I wanted to, uh, I was living in Detroit at the time, and I wanted to bring value to investors. So back to retargeting, I put out a video, one minute video of me speaking, and I was telling the story about how I used my FHA loan to buy my fourplex. Pure value. Hey guys, I don't know if you know, if you put blah, 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 you get three and a half percent down, not only on a single family, but also duplex, triplex, fourplex. That was it. No right hook, no nothing. But I ran it as an ad and I ran it um, to essentially uh, retarget the people who watched more than 30 seconds of that video. So if you watch more than 30 seconds of that video, that means you watch the video, you know who I am, all that type of stuff. So if you watch that video for more than 30 seconds, later on that week or that day, you were going to get hit with an ad on your Facebook story and your Instagram story of me throwing a right hook saying, hey, guys, my name's Hakeem. And it has a quick clip of me talking at that thing. So you're like, oh, it's that guy. By the way, I'm hosting a free event for real estate investors, free wine, free food at this place in Detroit. Swipe up for more details. And that swipe up was an Eventbrite link. I, I mean, filled the room up with people with 10 days, like 10 days notice, I want to say. But that's literally, and I may have spent less than 300 bucks. And from that, like back to CAC and LTV, I, mean, I must've gotten like 12 new clients from it. And like, that's, that's an investment well worth, but most people don't do the deep dive on the ad side. So I always tell people, learn it yourself and then hire somebody. Because if you just hire somebody, you don't know what you're even judging. Do you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I hope that helps. No problem. Uh, any more questions? There we go. And that, by the way, that's an example of giving it away for free in terms of value. Most people will literally be like, eh, let's talk later and I'll, you know, make sure you're a client. Like anything you need help with from an ad side, just reach out. I got you. Yes, sir. Your question. Uh, thanks for coming out tonight. No um, and then I'm a graduate of YouTube University. Let's go. Well. Let's go. Um, and so... How do you compare YouTube videos, which can be long, yep. to TikTok videos, which I guess I'm hearing are 60 seconds? Is that right? Uh, 60 seconds. They've rolled out a beta for a massive amount of people that allow you to do three minutes. And they've rolled out another beta for a smaller amount of people that actually allow you to do 10 minutes. Um, but I don't know if that answers your question. If you want to. Uh, I mean, I know you're uh, promoting or you're suggesting LinkedIn and TikTok or. Um, yes. Are you asking what? YouTube is important too. I wouldn't say it's not important. I again think of uh, of social of a game of paid versus organic. Paid meaning I put money behind it so it reaches a larger audience of people, or organic meaning I pay nothing. It could be gems. You could just drop gems on a day-to-day -day basis, but no one's going to see it if you don't have the pre-existing audience because YouTube's organic reach isn't what it was like 10 years ago. Meaning I post something and now I got all these subscribers and all these people watch the video and I have no people who subscribe. TikTok tomorrow, you could post 10 videos in a row and all of a sudden you've got 10,000 people listening and wanting to hear what you have to say because the supply and demand gap is there. The supply and demand gap isn't necessarily there with YouTube anymore like it used to be. Like YouTube, you used to get paid after you had 100,000 views on YouTube, you got 25 cents per view, which is a lot of money. Like a lot, now it's like 0.0000001 cents per view once you get past like, a, because it's the, 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 the pipes are clogged. Meaning there's, there's, when you think of content and just distributions, I always think about it just like there's pipes and how much content can fit through the pipes for what's on the other end of it. YouTube, it's, 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 it's jammed in the sense of there's a lot of people watching on YouTube. There's a lot of people posting on YouTube. TikTok, there is, I mean, at the end of 2021, it was the most uh, visited website beating out Google for the first time. And I don't know how many years that came out in December meaning people are on it, but still because of our 
our generation's inherent insecurity, no one Only for college kids don't even touch Facebook. Instagram started off as a platform that was a photo editing platform. You uploaded a photo and you added a filter on it and you downloaded that photo to send it to someone. Like, mom, I just took this cool picture. Check it out. Not let me post it. And like, now it's Instagram. Like TikTok started off as Musical.ly, which was a dancing platform that guided you with songs and all that type of stuff. And now it's TikTok, but it's happening fast. Every, every platform that's happened on, that transition has happened faster and faster and faster. The beauty of TikTok is people are still sleeping on it. I think there's a 12 to 18 month like window before it's over. Meaning the same question you just asked about YouTube versus TikTok is the same answer of, Instagram versus TikTok. Why not Instagram versus TikTok? I tell people the fastest way to grow on YouTube and Instagram in the year 2022 is posting on TikTok. Why? Because unlike any other platform, TikTok has made it severely easy right in your bio. And I, let's say you put out a video, I watch it, I like it, I click on your profile. Now, right in your bio, there's an Instagram icon and a YouTube icon that I can click Within seven seconds, I can subscribe to your YouTube account and subscribe to your Instagram account. I like I've posted, I've been posting on YouTube since 2011. No traction. Stopped probably posting in like 2016 and 2017. Got on TikTok, crushed it, and I'm just subscribers coming in left and right. And I'm like, I have nothing for you. Like I'm, I'm glad you guys are you know subscribing to my, my 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 page. But like Instagram, I had three four thousand followers when I first started on TikTok. And now I'm just about at 10,000 followers on Instagram, solely off of TikTok, like all, like all from TikTok. So where I'm going with it is it's, it's just organic reach. That's the only difference. I think the platform is valuable because it's valuable to actually have a full-blown, you know, 30-minute vlog if you want to, full-blown transparency into one of your meetings with your GCs and all that type of stuff. Like, there's nothing wrong with that, making, like, putting all the pieces to the puzzle together. I'm just saying that the organic reach, meaning the new people coming into your world, are going to come from TikTok. YouTube, you've got your subscribers and your loyal audience, but you're not going to find much new people finding and discovering your content unless, you, unless you're a YouTube expert. There's YouTube experts tell you, you do the right thumbnail, the right hook, the right words, the right all that stuff, and then maybe you'll reach other people, the right words that will you know, in, in your in your title of your video that will get you on the right, you know, popular pages and all that stuff. That happens, but that's like praying for a miracle. TikTok is practical. LinkedIn, practical. Like you post a uh, perfect example is YouTube. I have my I have some of my long form speeches on YouTube, right? 300 views, 400 views, something like that. I'll take a minute clip from one of those speeches on YouTube, put it on TikTok, and 1.3 million people watch it. It's a tree falling in the woods and no one hearing it, but you taking that tree and putting it on the middle of the highway to make sure people hear it. Because you know the highway has a distribution, the woods doesn't. But the tree's still in the woods. So uh, <clears throat> on YouTube, uh, you can get paid, I guess. Uh, they'll advertise your video. Yep or monetize your video and you by putting do, ads on it. Yep. Does TikTok monetize that oh, yeah. way? Oh yeah. They have a creator fund and they're essentially rewarding its creators for the fact of the great job that they've done to keep all these people hooked on the platform. If I, let's see, I took a break. I posted like seven, eight times in a month, like recently. And like all those videos crushed it. But like on an, if I took, if I, I don't post as much as I should, and I'm screaming at you guys, if I posted as much as I should, like my top month on TikTok, two grand, 2,500, something of that sort, of just solely off of the fact of people watching the videos and do, like you not selling anything, you not doing anything. 
Then TikTok has a creator marketplace, which is really cool because let's say you have passions like coffee, you have passions like old cars, you have passions like old train sets and stuff like that. The creator marketplace allows brands to literally reach out directly to you, negotiate with you and decide how much you want to get paid to make a video about, I mean, I don't know if you guys have heard of like the uh, Mohu uh, antennas that go on top of your house. Uh, it's like instead of having cable, you can have like a uh, satellite TV. Have you guys, Mohu is like the, 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 the company in this area. It's a perfect example. I didn't wind up doing it because I just don't watch TV in that standpoint. But Mohu, just after seeing my content, like, okay, cool. Reach out to me directly. Say, hey, you just make, we're going to give you a free satellite thing. It's sent to the house. I just haven't used it. But if you make a video about it, we'll give you a thousand bucks. And I'm like, I personally don't, I, it's not genuine if I made that video, but that's it's 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 literally that easy in that sense. Like one of my best friends who I got on TikTok, worked with him and all that type of stuff. And now he's we play college football together. Now he's a ultra marathon runner. He just grew a passion for running. Two weeks ago at the Pittsburgh Marathon, I want to say, Dick Sporting Goods paid him 27 grand to run in the marathon and record content of him at the marathon solely because he makes TikToks about running. Dick's just reached out to him again. Hey, there's another, I don't know where the marathon's at. <laughs> They're in negotiations right now to pay him $80,000 to go and run a freaking marathon. And they're going to create all, they're going to send their people to create all the content, all that type of stuff. Where I'm going with it is brand is everything. He's doing real estate deals with the people that, he's a real estate guy as well. We were partnered on that Iowa project. He's working with the people in his passion on top of that, which is the, the, the double whammy to it all. We do real estate deals with people from our book club. We do real estate deals with people from our VFW. We do real estate deals with real estate is a people game. So when you start to take content more seriously, more people will be in your ecosystem to ultimately do more deals. Does that answer your question? No problem. More questions? Yes, sir. You okay, princess? You're so precious. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So, um, oh, sorry. He was. Uh, so, um, yeah, my, my apologies, bro. Uh, no problem. I, I I know this is real estate, but anything you've got a bit of field on on what you know people have used TikTok for, and young artists have had to cope with the total change and how they get compensated for their art. Musicians, particularly, but people who are actors, producers. You have all these things now, like, for instance, Amazon has some sort of a, a channel where um, young artists or actors or producers or writers can produce content. Um, I think YouTube has something similar to that. Are you seeing, just as far as your clientele, are you seeing opportunities in the entertainment space? Or are you looking to represent people in the entertainment space that are trying to place content on TikTok to get noticed, whereas now, you know, you can't really get noticed anymore? Unless that's real by accident, you know, that's real. No, uh, 150,000 percent. The easiest way to grow in the music world, in the acting world, and in the writing world is TikTok for a multitude of perfect example. Right now, our coffee company, and this isn't even them making TikToks, but this is how I'm using people in the, in the entertainment space. Our coffee company, we want to create, uh, we, we need more TikTok content. So we're literally paying acting students to literally create skits that make fun of in a sense of coffee snobs. Everyone seemed like a coffee snob and you know, those types of people, but literally you know, we're gonna pay you X to make a hundred videos about this. That's like, a, that's like the very simplest form of it. But when you think of people that actually make music, people who wanna act and all that type of stuff, I mean, there's no bounds to it when it comes to the content that you can create. You know, when it comes to, to music, you know, every single one of your songs, of your lyrics, the background of every song, the story behind every song. Forget about a music video. How do you focus on, how do I create an actual TikTok that's going to actually engage the audience on the back end? There's, uh, with music as well, when it comes to, you know, getting streams and stuff like that. I know it was like this about a year ago. If I create a song, let's say, and I now pay someone who has a much bigger audience in a sense, I could then, I'm not sure how 
well versed about with TikTok. Let's say that person, so TikTok was big with dancing in the past, correct? Let's say you get a creator who has a massive following and they create dances all the time. And when they create a dance, all of their followers want to now recreate that dance. But that song that they used is from that artist that we're talking about. So I pay this creator 300 bucks. Hey, spend some time and just create a cool dance for me to this song, 15 seconds, 20 seconds. Boom, they create it. They now post it. Now they've got, let's say, 70, 80, 90 other people recreate that dance. What TikTok was doing before, and I'm not sure I got to confirm this. Um, my, my favorite answer is I don't know because I like to speak the truth. The views that you, you're now getting on those TikToks, let's say those 90 people creating those videos accumulated 1.7 million views that in, in, in totality, which is beyond reasonable and practical. Those views, because your song is being played in the background, accumulate and actually count as royalties as someone is streaming that song, if that makes sense. So it's a, it's a massive hack in that sense. But when I'm thinking of writers and I'm thinking of actors, I mean, all day you should be doing skits. Yeah, the reason I asked my son is a Juilliard trained actor. And oh, yeah. He should, be, he should be doing all he, like he writes as much as he acts and he, he's produced something that it, it's. 11 five minute episodes and it's done. He's in the process of editing it now, but you know, like a lot of his classmates, he's had a few, I'm not gonna drop any names, but they're big stars now, but most of them are struggling one aspect or another trying to build a career, but it's sort of like, how does he grab the attention? This could be the place to post on TikTok rather than trying to go through Amazon. 100%. Or YouTube. But I'll tell you one thing, I'd love to talk to your son whenever, it's a hundred thousand times harder for kids who are in college because all of us, we post a TikTok, we go back to our house, we go to bed, we hang out with our family. People are in college, you post a TikTok, now you're in the dining hall with all of your colleagues. Now you're back in class with your colleagues for the judgment that we're talking about of, oh, Brian, why the hell are you posting TikToks? You think you're cool stuff or something? Like, like it seems small, but I'm telling you, it is loud at there. I, I spend majority of my time speaking to college students and entrepreneurs. And, all of them have TikTok, none of them post because they're literally petrified. To, like, it's overcoming that insecurity right. and taking everything that he's written, everything that he wants to do from a creative standpoint and literally having no holds on it and actually just posting. Because I'm telling you six months with your eyes closed and your head down of trying to post three, four times a day on TikTok, I, I would bet the entire farm on it that things will be in motion and things will change from it. Like, <laughs> Like I've gotten offers to do acting. I'm not, I want to act in the future. I used to do honors theater, but I've gotten offers to do it. I've gotten offers for someone to write a movie because I told my Haiti story that I was just telling you guys, someone wants to write a movie on that, but it came from TikTok is where I'm going with. Like it's, it's so at scale and it's so, there's so little noise in that arena of actually posting. You're literally by yourself and like, but like I said, you've got a 12 to 18 month runway before it's going to be like Instagram. Everybody remembers when our Instagram, I don't know how much you guys are on Instagram, but we're even Facebook. Our timelines used to be chronological. You used to be able to see exactly somebody just posted three minutes ago and you see it. Now you see something from two days ago, three hours ago, because there's so much content clogging the pipes that they can't show you everything because you're, there'll be too much stuff on your timeline. TikTok is the opposite. When that flips, it's going to be too late to grow. Just like it's too late to, you can't just organically grow on Instagram. You post on Instagram and you got a thousand followers, 300 of them might see it. Do you get what I'm saying? You post on TikTok. Right now on TikTok, the data today is 80% of your views on every video you post on TikTok are coming from people who didn't follow you before you posted that video. Meaning if I got 100,000 views on a, on a video, 80,000 people who watched that video, it was the first time being exposed to my content. That's the punchline. You should work with his classmates when he gets your name around. I'd love to. I'd love to even just chat with them up front. It's no biggie. I see your question, but he had, uh, he had one first. So these little sh short videos, um, up to 30 seconds, I guess you're saying, or shorter and you're just doing crazy things like pooping and no, stuff. You know, I don't poop. I post while I'm pooping. Oh, sorry. See, <laughs> yeah, I post while I'm pooping. Yeah, I'm not just making poop content. No, <laughs> but keep going. Yeah. 
but whatever it is you actually are posting, then if it's not that, something else, um, is there a hook at the end? I mean, are they just going to be like, oh, this is a cool looking dude, you know, with a nice chain on, and then it, they go on to the next one? Or you got some way for them to go, hey, it's a nice chain, and I'm one heck of a di digital media, whatever, you know, thing. How are you monetizing these things? So and it's, it's a great question. Because it's, it's what I said before, even too, it's like it's hard to obviously measure the ROI of social media. But when you think about it, and when I, when I think about just inbound inquiries of, I, I get my link, I don't have it anymore, but in my link tree on my TikTok has a, uh, what is it? Uh, like I used to have like just do like 15 minute Zoom calls with any and everyone who wanted to learn more about TikTok from the digital side. And I mean, I would block out about four hours once a week every like never has it not been full and i've only made one post that was throwing the right hook at the end of the post because most people think the whole post is the right hook and it won't reach anyone because tiktok is a platform it has the most powerful algorithm compared to any any platform out there meaning you post a video this is how a video essentially goes viral i'm going to get to the 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 punchline of your answer of, of my answer I post a video on TikTok, its algorithm scans it. What did this person just say? What are they doing? What words did they use? What music are they using? All of that stuff. Now they're gonna find, let's say, a subject audience of 100 people. And it's gonna run a five to six point test on those 100 people, fast. I mean, like the first seven minutes after you post your video. What it wants to see is, if you're gonna get six points or five points, if someone watches that video and then sends it to someone. I'm sure you guys have gotten someone texted a video to you that was a TikTok post. Even though you weren't on TikTok, you could still watch that video. That's like TikTok sees that as the greatest thing that could happen because someone just watched one of your pieces of content. Now you're sending it to someone who doesn't have TikTok via text message to essentially get another person on the platform. So call that five, six points. Someone watches your video all the way through and then they follow you at the end of that video. 80% of the people who watch your videos don't follow you to begin with. That's five points. They watch your video and rewatch it because they wanted to get that point again. That's four points or three points. I, I gotta get this number scaled down. They watch your video um, and leave a comment on it. That's two points. They watch your video and they give you a like at the end. That's one point. Then they have their own internal, whatever score you get, that's them now deciding that, okay, we ran that test against these 100 people. Now let's run it against 1,000. Now let's run it against 10,000. And if you do good on that, they'll go to 100,000. They'll go to a million. They're just finding audiences because you're talking about fix and flips. They're going to find people who want to more content about fix and flips. You're talking about makeup. They're going to put it in front of people who want to watch people doing makeup. You're dancing. They're going to put it in front of people who watch dancing videos all day. Where I'm going with it is if you put out a video and at the beginning of that video, it says, hey, guys, I'm Akeem. I do this. I do that. I do this. I do that. TikTok has an option to just post a video that goes just to your followers. Uh, which I do that when I'm just putting real personal kind of heartfelt messages out. Like, let's say I don't post for like a month or something like that. I'll just be real with them. Like, hey guys, my mental health has been deteriorating and I just don't want to be on TikTok right now. So we'll see when I post again. And like, that'll be just like a real genuine message. But I know it's not going out to the whole world. It's going out to my followers. If I just throw a right hook in a video, it's not going to really get any type of traction. If I do a video that actually brings value to someone, and then at the end of it, in those last seven seconds, I throw a hook. There's no, there's no problem with that. I just wouldn't do it with every single video, if that makes sense. But like I said, I per perfect example of a right hook I threw once. I just wanted the data as an entrepreneur of how many people, because I had a lot of uh, younger, like high school and college kids who were following me for my football content. And I wanted to see who is actually active in football and actually wants to maybe learn, because this is peak COVID, who would do virtual training with me? because I had a client who was going to be doing it. And I wanted to just get the data of what's possible here. So I put out a video, like breaking down like a Baker Mayfield interception or something like that. And at the end of the video, I was like, hey guys, considering doing some like virtual training, leave a football like emoji in the comments on this video. And I'll reach out to you directly and we'll set something up to figure out something to see about training. 3,000 people left a comment asking to set up and learn about training. 
I think I had at that time 100,000 followers, maybe a little bit less than that. But that's the punchline. If you bring value up front, whatever you say on the back end, like there's a lot of people who throw the right hook really quick in every video of reminding people to follow them. Because again, the way TikTok works, and you'll see once you, once you download it, there's the For You page and there's the People You Follow page. For You page is the, out, the infinite timeline of posts that TikTok made for you in the sense of because they scanned someone else's video and thought that video would be perfect for you. And like I said, 80% of when you post a video, those people are coming, they're watching it on their For You page. So they don't follow you. It's just a random video. Let's say like, like my For You page is mainly real estate, entrepreneurship, and coffee content. But I don't follow those people. But those people might have a hook in their video saying, hey, guys, don't forget to like, like, like and comment or whatever. Like, in, or not like follow, follow for more videos about coffee. They might say that at the end of it. Or like 20 seconds into it when they've got you hooked, they might just, because TikTok made it easy where you just press the little plus sign while you're watching the video and you instantly follow that person. Mm -hmm. But man, I mean. I've gotten 26,000 followers in a 24 hour period. Content. Is it about your real estate, your coffee, and stuff like that? It's everything. That? Your brand is you. I'm not just real estate. I'm a dad. I have content about my daughter. I love magic. I do magic tricks on my freaking TikTok. I, I, like, it's real. I love coffee. So we'll be making like pour overs and stuff like on my TikTok because there's an audience for everyone. There's people in real estate that like coffee. There's people in real estate that like reading books. There's people in real estate that like David Blaine and magic, like me. And when it comes to content and it comes to brand and it comes to real estate, you want to be doing business with people that you actually like anyway, versus just I'm in this room just because I'm in this room in a sense, versus everyone in this room, that wouldn't say thinks the same as me, but has the same like uh, like-minded passions as me in real estate kind of comes the, on the back end because it's a, I wouldn't say, I say everyone has a hidden desire to get into real estate personally. Um, but does that make sense? Yeah. No, thank you. No problem. Um, I saw your hand raised, but she was next back there. No problem. Uh, she's back, yeah, back there. A princess. You see daddy talking? Oh, um, oh so like, like, your TikTok is just you. It's not necessarily like for your coffee company or your real estate. I have one for my coffee company and all yeah. that stuff. I always, and just to tell me to cut you off. Oh, no. People would rather follow people than follow companies. So if you have an extroverted, and I don't even consider myself an extrovert, um, but if you have someone who doesn't mind being in front of the camera, who is the guy, the girl of the company, it's much better to do it behind a person who's from XYZ company versus just being XYZ company, but there's nothing wrong with it. But keep going, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that, that was great. So like, say somebody likes writing and animals and stuff like that, like you could do like videos on like, if you've ever been stuck writing, here's a tip, or like, here's how to get your cat to whatever, I mean, or your dog or whatever. Yeah. And you just like, you do the value videos. And then if you have like, I don't know, a writing company, or if you have like a, a dog sitting company or something, you could, To her as the first. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think it's me. Yeah, okay. yeah it clicks with me. Okay, no, no problem. But did that answer the question? Oh, brilliant. No problem. Yeah. 
I do, yes. But then There's I have one TikTok site where you do everything. For me, yes. I have a company page for like my, my coffee business. And then I have clients who I work. I either use like some some clients just give me the full autonomy or our team the full autonomy to do everything from posting to comments to community management to everything and kind of report to them on a weekly basis or like on Sundays, we'll just mainly record a whole bunch. This little girl over here, I talk about, uh, I mean, food. I love waffles and pancakes. So I'll be at a waffle house just grubbing. And it's just like a quick video of me just eating waffles. Um, I talk about magic, do magic tricks. I might show people how to do magic tricks on my page. Um, coffee, um, anything that's genuine and real to you. Because that's the only thing that's sustainable that you can do in perpetuity. When you're being fake, you can't be fake forever because it gets old after a while. But I know I'll be a dad forever. I'll know I'll be doing coffee as long as I'm doing coffee. I know I'm, I'm gonna be doing real estate as long as I'm doing real estate. I know I'll always love magic because I've loved it since I was in middle school. So it's like, some people were like, okay, the, the people who have the shiny object syndrome will wanna just get rich quick. They kind of follow trends and just, I'm just gonna do that because that's what's working right now. And then I'm gonna do this because that's what's working right now. And then I'm gonna do this because that's what's working right now. It'll tire you out. And it's not sustainable, meaning I, you can't do that until you're 90 years old. It's not possible. But being you is the only thing that's actually sustainable, if that makes sense, because you can always be you. Does that answer your question? Well, um, but so you just really have one TikTok site or one LinkedIn site that yes, you're on, and you just throw it all out there. Yes, ma'am. And it just. Yes, ma'am. And it sounds, the gurus will tell you to niche down, niche down, niche down, niche down, niche down, talk about this and talk about, like, it's not sustainable. It's sustainable if you niche down and you're an expert on legal advice, sure, make content about legal advice, but I can promise you, you'll get more talked about ROI and business results if you're also talking about the fact that you go to church on Sunday. Or if you talk about the fact, and it's genuine to you, because some people, there's a lot of people who just BS and do things just to, you know, that, what's the word, uh, performative uh, things. So people can, you know, get on board with whatever they're ultimately doing in a business world. But like, if you're genuine about the fact that you have a three-year-old that you go on bike rides with every single day, people resonate with that. Because we resonate with human to human type of behavior versus I've got to be this suit and tie perfect legal expert and only talk about, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot easier. You're making it easier for the person on the other end of the table to want to work with you because you're like, I used to go to a book club too, or I've read that book too, or I like David Blaine too, or I like it's, it's that's in my opinion, that's real marketing. But the gurus will tell you to niche down, and I'd say. Sure, at what cost? If that, does that make sense? Uh, I know you had a question, but he had one and then he had one. <laughs> then he had another one. So blue shirt, yellow shirt, light blue shirt. <laughs> oh, Nishan now, that was your question? Okay, cool. Uh, he had one over here. Uh, and the cat shirt. Yep. Oh, hi there. Uh, I just wanted to ask and all about doing this here. What's going to keep somebody from uh, copying somebody else's or plagiarizing anything? Nobody's going to dare bring a lawsuit against them for anything like this. Abundance. I mean. Are you saying what's going to keep them from copying? Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's no early copyrights or anything on that. I could go out and pick the 100 best videos on this here and try to redo them all myself on a thing. And who's going to complain? I tell people to just go and do it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's abundant. Mm -hmm. The world is abundant. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. First, I, 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 I wouldn't be giving you all my best pieces of advice. I'd tell you to go on my TikTok, look at all my real estate posts, and try and make posts just like that. I'm telling you to do day in the life type of content because it works. Not many people do it, but the people who do it, yeah. it works for them. There's this, the supply and demand gap is so large that it doesn't matter if that makes sense. Like 
LinkedIn's stats, it's 0.0004% of users on LinkedIn actually post a video once a week. We're not even talking about every day, once a week. And it's less on TikTok. So it's the, the gap is there's a, there's plenty of people watching and not enough people posting. There's a lot of people wait, I wouldn't say waste their time, but wasting their time thinking about that. And that's the reason why they never even actually post. If that makes sense. Uh, a man back here had a question. So if I, if, I, if I subscribe to your TikTok channel and I want to check out the magic stuff, but not the real estate stuff, is there a way to do that? Yes. I haven't actually done that though yet. So you can, anyone can organize their, uh, all of their videos into different playlists. So I can have like real estate, magic, coffee, this, that. I honestly don't know why I haven't done it. That's probably the kick in the butt that I needed to actually do it. Um, but yeah, that that it, it it is pretty easy. And actually, a lot of creators, the bigger ones, they do it because it's just if I want, if you want to see all my day in the life vlogs in chronological order, you can. Versus going through all there's a lot of videos on there to to essentially scroll through. But yeah, it's it's just like YouTube. You can essentially organize it into playlists. And then uh, second question uh, on Netflix, they've got that show Magic for Humans. I haven't seen it yet. Is it good? He's from St. Louis. I know what. And they've got like three seasons. It's pretty good. That's awesome. Check that out. Yeah. Every magician should be on TikTok. <laughs> uh, more questions? Yes, sir. So funny. This, me and this guy, we met on TikTok, on TikTok Live. Didn't realize it until uh, before this beat started. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I didn't, he's right. I didn't know. I'm not a football guy either, but I didn't know anything about him. Never heard of him until TikTok. And, and one of the cool things about TikTok is if you have what a thousand followers you can go live is that what it is yeah i think it's a thousand followers a thousand, so, yeah, yeah so as i'm you know looking and this was right as covid was starting i was like yeah whatever i'll get on tiktok and spend some time and i he was one of the first uh real estate guys that popped up and um uh, he was live at that moment and i can click on and to go to enter his live and um and, you know, as he's talking, people can ask questions in the chat and can respond just like any Zoom. And, uh, you know, it's like, hey, you know, everybody post where you're from. And I said, St. Louis, Missouri. And he's like, no kidding. I'm I'm in St. Louis. I, I live in St. Louis. Where at? And um, I said, Chesterfield. And he was at Caldy's Coffee down in Chesterfield Valley. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that was pretty crazy. Um, but it's really fun. I mean, you can go in, into some superstars live and I try to ask a question of that there's questions go flying by like this. But uh, anyway, my, my question, I guess, uh, I, I post occasionally. I mean, I only have like 100 followers and most of them are people who are trying to get them, you know, inappropriate young ladies. Um, <laughs> so like, uh, you're not my follower, get away. <laughs> um, so how do I, uh, if I do, post something, you know, you can add a hashtag so that people, when they're clicking on hashtags, can find specific content. How, what would you suggest, um, you know, because if I say real estate investing, well, there's 9 billion views on that. So you're going to, no one's going to really notice you there. Um, do I do like St. Louis? Um, you know, it's not a bad idea doing St. Louis. One thing you yeah. should never do just as a piece of advice is I'm sure you see people do like hashtag for you page or hashtag FYP. You ever seen that before? That uh, it's a waste of, uh, it's a waste of space. If that makes sense. Meaning uh, your captions take up the bottom third of your video. The more hashtags you have, the bigger your caption, the bigger your video is being covered by word space. Correct. For you page, FYP, all that stuff has been uh, essentially like, I wouldn't say, uh, TikTok doesn't even register it. TikTok prides themselves on being the most democratic platform uh, in the sense of growth and that they try, they've they tried their best to make it so you actually can't hack it. Like Instagram, hashtags, hey cutie, you okay? Okay. Um, you can't, like Instagram, hashtags were the big thing where you could like, you could really get in front of a lot of people with hashtags. 
TikTok, I like the localized. Whenever I'm posting about a city and I'm in a city and whatever, I'll always drop the hashtag of whatever city it's in. But TikTok registers your hashtags the same way they register your caption in the sense of, like I said, those first couple seconds, they're scanning for everything. Words, hashtags, all of that. The only real hack to TikTok content is the Discover page. So I'm not sure if you've looked at the Discover page. Yeah. When you look at the Discover page every day, so those hashtags that you'll see there, that list is actually infinite. So if you keep scrolling, you'll find that whatever the hashtag was on New Year's, whatever the hashtag was on Christmas, whatever it was on Thanksgiving. But when you scroll all the way to the top and refresh it, they probably drop like two, three new ones a day in a sense. That is curated by TikTok themselves. And like, it's not like, like uh, on Twitter, like whatever's trending is trending because a lot of people are talking about it. Like TikTok puts it there because they want people to create within the confines of what other people are doing on that hashtag. So I always tell people like, spend three, three to four minutes. Careful princess, okay? Can we go hang out with Tony? Okay. <laughs> whatever people are posting uh, within those hashtags, and it's back to what you were saying of people copying and all that type of stuff. I tell people to spend three to five minutes, check the, you know, the new three to four that came on that day and scroll through like six, seven videos just to get the general, like I treat it like I'm watching football film, understanding what they're doing, why it's popular. Does it relate to my brand and what I ultimately am trying to get across? Because you'll see something where it might, it's talking about financial hacks. And it's just a financial hack is the biggest thing. Okay, let's talk about something in real estate on how that's a hack or how I did this or how I budget or how whatever that essentially looks like that's actually genuine to you. Can you say hi? Say hi. <laughs> I'm so precious. Uh, sorry, John. <laughs> but do that because TikTok will, like that's the, like, the only hack to TikTok is the Discover page. And that's like I said, that's from the C-suite right to my ears of, like do that because that's the only hack around it. But hashtags, they don't mean much. Like make a genuine caption as, as genuine as you can make it. That's gonna make the most sense, but just make the best video because right now their algorithm is powerful enough where if, if the video is good, it'll work. And my, another piece of advice for everyone in the room, whatever niche you are in, in real estate, take 10 hours. And did something as serious as a heart attack, take 10 hours. Search whatever your niche is, fix and flip, you know, VRBO, whatever that looks like, watch 10 hours of videos within that niche. Just literally just scroll. Like it doesn't have to be 10 hours straight, just oh, an hour a day for 10 days straight, 30 minutes a day for 20 days straight, 15 minutes a day, for 40, whatever that looks like. Because what you're going to see fast is that 70% of the people don't even know what they're talking about and their videos are doing really well just because of the supply and demand gap. But what you need to do is understand how they are showing up within that niche. Meaning, I when I first started in football, careful, Princess, when I started in football, I noticed that people were having a massive amount of success breaking down uh, plays in green screen fashion, meaning my head's right here, the play that I'm talking about is right above my head, and I'm showing you that this is why the quarterback got sacked here. The left tackle did this, he didn't point that guy, that safety dropped, so he should have knew that that guy was blitzing him, and that guy blitzed, that's why the, the quarterback got sacked. And I'm giving you my perspective from a professional athlete's angle. Where I'm going with it is, is my first four to five, no, six months on TikTok. I went from zero to like 300 followers, that was it. Like, that was it until I heard the piece of advice that I literally just gave you. Take 10 hours and only consume content in your niche to understand how people are showing up within that niche to add your own flavor, your own seasoning on it. That's actually genuine to you, authentic to you. But that, that's, that, that, that's, that's how I, that's the quickest way to hack TikTok. No problem. Yeah, I was uh, also at, I, um, I got a comment on one of my videos from a, a local wholesaler. It was like, hey, you know, renovations coming along. I'm like, whoa, I don't even know how he Crazy, how right? connected. But uh, yeah, I'm like, hey, am I on your buyer's list? Put me in. So <laughs> pretty cool. I, I mean, I've met so many great people on TikTok, like from lives, like people like yourself. I mean, I met this kid in, I love fish. Fishing is another one of my passions. Student in Wisconsin, he makes lures, he makes custom lures, and he goes fishing all the time. 
and he met him on a live. We're chatting. So he sends me his wars. I sent him some coffee. He invited me and my dad out to come and go fishing on his boat in Wyoming sometime. Like it's genuine if you dive deep into your actual passions and you're authentic about it. But then like you'll find <laughs> you will find business success on the back, like the back end. Like I said, when it comes from genuine content creation, it is hard up front to measure that ROI. And that's where everyone gets discouraged. You okay? Um, but yeah, I mean, TikTok, man, and lives on top of that. Like I have, I probably have some of my most fun on lives because it's like, I get to kick back, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes and just say what's up. And like, answer, like if you like answering questions, going live and doing anything with content is a great way to go about it. And I tell other people too, you got no one following you and no one asking you questions yet. There's a site called, uh, It's called, uh, oh my gosh, does anybody know the name? Tony, you know the name of the site where, oh my gosh, there's so many, there's just a bunch of questions on so many topics, not like Reddit, but it's kind of like Reddit. It starts with a Q. Quora. Quora. No, thank you. Yes. Quora. I knew you'd know it. I knew you'd know it. Quora, back when I was first starting, I mean, this is like before, it's like 2018, when I first decided content, the next step for me questions that you know the answer to but no one's asked you yet you can just search vrbo you'll see thousands of questions about vrbo what you can do then screenshot that question crop it so you got the words from that question put it right above your head and you just answer it i used to literally have my interns all day just scouring for for questions and i didn't want to see them beforehand because i my my favorite way is just off the jump because it's the most genuine, authentic version of just someone asked me a question. If I don't want to answer my favorite words, I don't know. But we'd start every morning with, we called it questions with Keem, where they would just start with five questions from Quora that they found and I would answer them and we repurpose those into content. That's how I should have told you guys that at the beginning, but anything you're an expert in, someone's asked questions about it on Quora. You can now have your kids, have anyone ask you those questions. So if you, if you, because like, if you're like me, then you don't want to read that question before you post it. Like, but if you don't mind it, just, okay, that's a softball question. Now let me answer it. Like you have like thousands of thousands of thousands of thousands of thousands of questions and videos that you can make literally about anything. But when it comes to real estate and whatever your expertise is, Quora. Uh, somebody else had a question. A Q-U-O-R-A. Quora. It's, 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 man, it's great. Cause it's, it's like I said, I, I honestly have not used Quora in like three years. And like the fact that we're talking about, I'm definitely about to get back on and start creating content. I'll beat you guys to the punch. Any other questions? Uh, these two right here. Real quick question. Um, I didn't grow up in the computer age or social media. And is it uh, user friendly to learn how to use TikTok? Yes. Um, like I said, anything you started, like she's in the process of trying to ride a bike, struggling. It's 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 a it's a process. Um, and I wouldn't say I grew up on it. I mean, I grew up I had MySpace back when I was in like high school. Um, but I understand the difficulties. It looks like rocket science when you first approach it. It's severely overwhelming. It's leaning back into self-awareness and what you ultimately can be good at, but you won't figure out what you're good at if you never start and try. So I tell people start simply with words. Start simply like you can make all your TikToks if you wanted to from a POV standpoint, like you can never be in the video. If I'm doing a day in the life, it's from this angle, camera facing out of what I'm doing, not on, some people get uncomfortable with this feeling right here, but it's POV of what I'm actually doing in that standpoint. If it's, uh, it can be literally anything. Let's say you're answering questions on Quora and you don't wanna be in it, but you've got this beautiful sunset that you see every day and you can just, let's say, you can time-lapse the actual golden hour of the sunset. But in the background, you're answering questions on Quora and you've got the subtitles of what you're actually saying so people can see it. So it's like, there's so like, shoot first and then aim later. Like look at the scope later, just start shooting. Like 
from any and every single angle, the only thing that's ultimately going to hold you back is the judgment. But if you have any questions about anything, like I'm, 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 I am the first to just help just to get you over that hump, uh, just to show you like this is possible if you just do X, Y, and Z. And I think I do need to take your advice and go to the mall and lay on the floor. It'll help. I'm telling you, it sounds, if you do it, I'll be so, be so happy if you did. I made a post on TikTok talking about it. I mean, that video I got posting it, it got, I think like 2.1 million views. Everybody thought I was crazy, but it, the piece of advice came from, I believe, a Tim Ferriss book, I want to say. Um, but I had people uh, on TikTok, you can, uh, what's the word? Uh, essentially split screen and make a reaction video to what someone's saying or doing. I mean, I had at least 10 to 15 people who split screened it and actually did it. And the video was them. Like, it's me talking on one side saying, go to the mall and do this. And it's literally people by the fountain just like, it'll get you over the hump though. Cause it's like, you just reframe it of like, man, I didn't die. And yes, 120 people just judged me right there, but I'm now gonna go to Nordstrom and finish my shopping. And that's how, once you start to look at life like that, honestly, it takes a lot of mental weight off of it because that's what holds all of us back in a sense is fear of judgment from others. Yes, sir. Um, so one more time, could you give us all your contact information? Tell us what you can do for us and run by some of those pricing again so I can put it on my phone, please. Yes, sir. Well, what did you say at the end, though, about putting on your phone? What, what you're about to say, your contact information. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so on TikTok, for, for its simplest form, I probably should have been a little one-page slideshow. It's just uh, at Hakeem Ballas. It's my first name, H A K. E E M as in Max. And then Lucy, what's daddy's last name? What's my last name? I'm trying to practice names so she doesn't know. I'm lost, but where's daddy? I keep right. Uh Vallis, V is in Victor. A L L E S. And that's where you'll find me on TikTok. And obviously that's my first and last name for uh for, for LinkedIn. Um I'd say the best way to uh, reach out to me from uh, just even just emailing or anything of that sort about anything, uh, it's gonna be my, my, uh, my newest email is just Hakeem, it's my first name. And then it's at uh, the letter S, M as in Max, L as in love, and then C as in coffee. And then the word supply, smlc supply.com. Um, and then from what I can offer from you know my media and marketing standpoints is essentially we are a full scale advertising agency. So we do everything from just you know the, the creative ideation of whatever type of content you want to ultimately come up with, and just from a consulting standpoint, or we just literally give people the keys to the castle so they can do it themselves because some people don't want someone holding their hand or someone posting or doing anything of that sort. Um, but then we go to the full, you know, part of the process of, uh, what do you call it, uh, from the creative to also the, the back end post-production of actually editing your videos, putting all the stuff on your videos and actually posting it for you uh, on the platforms. TikTok has been our main flavor and everything that we've done lately, uh, but we also do LinkedIn. Uh, we do Facebook. We do the ad side uh, on uh, Facebook ads and Instagram ads and TikTok has an ad product as well right now. Um, working with it on a couple of clients and waiting to get better data before I'm like, hey, do TikTok ads with Facebook ads, work, like work, work. Um, but you reach out to me, I'm not the person who's gonna be like, okay, you gotta pay to even have a conversation with me. Like I'm gonna bring, we have a 20 minute conversation. I'm gonna show you how to do it yourself regardless. And then if you wanna work with me and, and you know take it from there, then we could take it from there. But uh, that's, uh, I get back to everything. And but TikTok, LinkedIn, man, I'm telling you, with every last breath I have, if you've got it in you, like, do it. Like LinkedIn, here's a quick another nugget. I think I gave it out last meeting. LinkedIn, back to anyone you want to talk to, reach out to, meet with, do anything with. LinkedIn has a really neat feature where if we're connected on LinkedIn, like I connect with you, you accept my connection request, and now we're connected with each other. LinkedIn allows you to send a video message directly to someone. 
meaning I can be like, hey, John, super happy to be connected with you and in your network, hope my content could bring you value and stuff like that. Um, was curious to know, like, are you, I noticed you weren't on TikTok. Would love to, you know, maybe have a short conversation and show you the value of that platform. Boom. Or it's notice that you just closed this massive deal with X, Y, and Z. Would love to have a short conversation and show you some of the projects that I'm working on. Or would love to just hear more about the process of working with X, Y, Z operator. Or would love to hear more about, like, it works like dynamite. Because one thing about LinkedIn is there's so many people using copy and paste bots and stuff like that where when you actually send a video message, it breaks through all the noise. It's pattern disruption at scale. And it's a lot easier than trying to come up with, okay, how do I send the perfect message to this person? You know, it winds up taking 20 minutes because you're, you know, second guessing yourself. I literally will send a 20 to 30 second video. I will not rewatch it because I hate watching myself on, on video anyway. I just send it. I say what I would have said to that person if I had them in the elevator anyway. But I... You know, to, to giving you kind of transparency, even how I run my business, like when I have like my, my interns that are, are creating different, you know, from a sales standpoint, organizing my leads on that Excel sheet is their name, what they do and their LinkedIn, uh, what do you call it? But then I'll have my interns click on those to connect with those people and then let me know when they accepted it. So I can then spend two to three hours sending a hundred video messages to the people that I want to get in touch with. And I promise you, I'm like, I, I'm the I cold call anyone to death. There's nothing that works as, as good as LinkedIn, as LinkedIn video messages to the people, because any and everyone, anyone at some private equity firm at this first place that does debt at, you know, this operator that's doing this LinkedIn videos, 90% of the responses are, oh my gosh, Akeem, never got a video message before. I'm going to steal that. Such a great touch. And then get to the, actually whatever we're talking about from a business standpoint. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Always. If you, if you, if, like, yes. Yeah. Always yourself before the business, but it doesn't matter. Like, if you have it in you to do it yourself, it's not nothing wrong with, I wouldn't say hiding behind a, a business because it does kind of give you that anonymity behind the, the business in that sense. But people connect with people over businesses and will ultimately want to work with those people and want to know what they do as a business. No problem. Okay, I understand why last time you had people going out the door, I wasn't there, and so I <laughs> got you. I yeah, understand well. now, and our, our time is running short. It's nine o'clock. We got the room till nine thirty. Gotcha. Um, was this great? Great content for it. Let's hear it for Hakeem. Thank you. I'm glad I could help. You. And I'll be around. Any questions you guys have yeah, about anything? You can hang around. We got the room for another half hour. If I can, awesome. uh, I've been I've had this bag with me for the last couple of meetings. I've been, we we used to do. Uh, um, attendance prizes, but I was thinking about maybe, I, I didn't buy the, any of the tickets yet, about having a t-shirt cannon, <laughs> but I could find one of those. But I thought you've got a better throwing arm than I do. Okay, cool. Can you just pick out somebody in the audience? Go ahead and throw, throw out a few, uh, got a few uh, giveaways here. Absolutely. Oh, that's sweet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I wanna give one all the way in the back here. Okay, give one to you out of your favorite question too. You, you, can, you can select who you want to pass it to. <laughs> oh, I went to David Blaine, my bad. No problem. Got a couple of hats here with our logo. Huh? That's for that's that's for that lady. Can you can you can you bring this the blue jacket who gave you the water earlier? Right there. <laughs> oh, Lucy, Lucy, right there. Remember she gave you chips and water. <laughs> Sweet we got some, some, uh, huh? We're gonna give this. You see that guy? You see him? Give him that. Give him that. Pink t shirt with our logo. logo on it. <gasps> Do you want a pink t shirt? There you Here go. Here sweetheart. Okay. <laughs> and uh, one nice stocking cap. Anybody feeling cold? Uh, Hakeem, so glad you could uh, uh, stick around Absolutely. and uh, be here tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys. For Thanks again.